What's up guys, my name is Danny. I draw cards, I turn them into 3D prints using Qforge. Today I talked about how to use ColourPop for this particular image and how to turn it into a 3D print like this one. We're going to use Affinity Photo and I kind of go over how to use Affinity Photo for Hueforge or at least how I use it um, to make my 3D prints. If you want to come join us, this is like a live presentation that we do over on Polymakers uh, Discord. I do them every Friday at 7 p.m. CST. So come check it out. You can ask questions during the presentation and all that stuff. And then we have a little hangout afterwards. You can also, if you don't have Hueforge already, you can check out my affiliate link in my link tree. I'll link it down below in the description. I hope you guys enjoy and get a little bit out of this video and how I use it. And hopefully this helps you. Okay, so today we're going to learn about Hueforge and we're going to learn about how to use ColourPop a little bit better and how to edit your image for ColourPop in Affinity photo. I have this picture here as our first example. It looks like it would be a very easy hue forge because it's you know just yellow and, and some reds but whenever you go to put in let's say a yellow filament, a red filament, maybe a couple oranges, bring these up to height you see it's not really separating the background too well from the butterfly itself. So we could take it into color aware. And if we were to take it into color aware, this is an option. There's there's a couple of different ways that we can handle this image. But if we take it into color aware, it's not going to work out too well because the yellows are going to be in the red space along with these reds and oranges. So it kind of gives us a dilemma and it makes it so that we have to use an image editor. Um, I'll show you just very quickly what's going to happen whenever we go to try and use color aware. Give me another white. Perfect. And then I need another black. We'll just use this black. Bring it up to here. Bring this white up. So you can see that it's picking from the same color space or the same bucket and you can easily see that we have red and green here. I turned off blue because there's no real, there's no blue in the image so there's no need for it. But even if we bring up our tolerances, it kind of gets close but you're still getting muddy with this orange yellow area. And so it, it just kind of, it makes it complicated and it makes it just easier to go ahead and edit the photo for color pop. Um, now for people that don't know, color pop is where you're taking a black and white background on a photo and then like a colorful main subject and Hueforge is going to look at that black and white background and the colorful subject and it's going to separate it into two separate Hueforges and then it'll stack them together. So to do that, I use Affinity Photo. Um, this is what I have so far. So I already made the selection um, just to give some some basic tips on how to use the selection tools to select the area that you want to keep or turn black and white. You've got your selection tool over here on the left hand side. Um, it's this orange paintbrush and then up here at the top you've got the width of this brush. You can see um, the size of the brush right now and we can bring that up you know giant giant size so another tool that we use I think snap to edges it's this option here this checkbox I think it's on by default um, if it's not then you want to turn that on and what's going to happen is it will um, snap to the nearest colorful edges because when you zoom into these photos you can see that there's you know very obvious pixel differences as far as color goes. So Affinity is able to pick up on that. Um, the other thing that I 
wanted to know when I was getting into this was you've got add and subtract. So let's say that, let me bring this brush size up a little bit. So for example, you've got this now and you don't want this in your selection. You can just, right now we're in add, right now we can subtract, subtract from that selection. So once you have the selection made, you also have this refine tool. We're gonna hit refine or option rather. So when you refine it, it shows this overlay and it shows your selection inside of that overlay. Um, you've got your preview function right here and you can change it so that you can better see what um, your selection is. Um, you mainly want to use either black mat or white mat. Um, black and white is a little bit better for like if you have dogs or people's hair or stuff like that, you'll get a better um, preview of what you're selecting and those little refinements that you need to make. But for now, I know that this is a pretty good um, selection. So now you've got all these other options. We'll go over that later in another video. But we've got output. And I'm going to go ahead and do output as a new layer. So when you have it set to new layer, it's going to take your selection, in this case the butterfly, and it's going to put it on its own layer. It'll keep everything that you had on the original layer, but it'll create its own layer. I'll just show you here. So now we have the butterfly cut out. It went ahead and turned off the background or the original, but we can you know, move it around, make adjustments however we want. So. We'll go ahead and turn the background back on. Um, whenever you're in Affinity, you want the Adjustments tab. And this is where you have a bunch of different options as far as you know what you can do to the image or what, which, for whichever layer you're on. So right now we're still on the original. Um, and to make it super easy just for um, ColourPop, we'll go to the black and white and we'll just select default. So now we're set up. I actually think this one will work a lot better because it shows a little bit more detail. Um, now we're set up to use this in HueForge. So I'll go ahead and export it. The transparent background is going to look kind of janky in HueForge because I just didn't size it to the image. Um, but that's an easy crop. save it there. Another thing when you're in Affinity, um, to make it a transparent background, you go to your document and then you have a checkbox for your transparent background just as a, a tidbit. Um, so we'll come back over here, we'll grab the edited photo, bring it into HueForge. So now, gosh this looks horrible, um, <laughs> with all the colors, we'll go back over, we'll go to ColourPop, so now what we need to do is, like I said, it's two Hue Forges stacked on each other. You've got the transparent background here. This is not going to print the checkerboard. Um, but like I said, this would be an easy crop. I can just crop out this stuff. Um, but so we'll set up the color pop. So you need a black for your base, and then you'll also need a white for your highlights. And then for the second hue forge, which I'm pretty sure in this case is the butterfly, you'll need a rebase. Um, and rebasing is just using another black and then another white for your highlights just to start the next hue forge. Otherwise you get blending from the bottom hue forge into your second one and we don't want that. So let's go ahead and turn these on. Let me go ahead and turn this yellow off. So, I'm going to get rid of some of this extra gap. We're going to bring the layer heights down to 0.4 just to get some more detail out of the butterfly. And then we should actually be able to... I'm 
this white all the way up. We'll bring this down just a little bit. Play around with the values. And then we need this white to come up. Okay, so the so right now we're going to start adjusting the butterfly colors. And it looks pretty good as is, but we can bring in some Actually, we can probably come up with this orange. I think we need to add a little bit of a red into it. So I'm going to right click and find the closest filament that I own. And it'll pop up what you own first and then you can scroll down and it'll show you the unowned stuff that might be a little bit closer. So I've got some Polyterra, some Army Red. And that's looking really good. The colors are looking really good. I actually have a, um, a very high TD yellow, so we might not even have to use orange at all. This is an 8 TD orange, but let me try this, this 10 TD that I have. See how well the blending does. Let Hue Forge do all the work for us. Yeah, that looks really good. Can actually bring this up just a little bit. That might be a little too much there. That's looking pretty good. Come down just a hair there. And then we can actually, for the background, you don't have to completely copy the picture, right? Like you can do whatever you want. We can make this a purple butterfly with a yellow background or a green background with the you know traditional monarch colors, but We'll go ahead and add a little bit of green here. And we'll bring this green all the way up. Add a little bit of depth. I'm going to reorder the sliders over here so that it makes everything look a little bit more clean. Keep this up. And maybe a little bit of yellow up here too, just for some added depth and color to the background. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. So, the cool thing about Hue Forge now is that it's actually, it will show you, you see these deep valleys? Um, you know, it's swap by layer. We're not doing multiple colors per layer. So it's showing you exactly how it's going to look and the texture that you'll have whenever you go to print it out, um, which I find really, really helpful. Um, you can also see on the sides now what it'll look like. Um, are there any questions yet from the Polymaker Discord? No? Good. Great! Grand! What's TD? TD is transmission distance. Um, this is also defined as like the opacity of your filaments. A high TD would be anything 12 and above, really 10 and above. A low TD would be anything from like 2 and below, and then somewhere in the middle you got mid TDs. Um, low TDs are really opaque. High TDs are very transparent. Um, your more transparent filaments are better for blending. Your more opaque filaments are better for making color changes quickly. Um, so my best example is like if you had a really low TD blue and then a really high TD red and you stack those together and you're layering them in a hue forge, it'll look purple when you look at it from uh, top down. So... I just wanted to show off today, um, you know, using Affinity Photo and how we can set up a color pop. There's also, let's get back to it. So we've also got HSL, which is your hue shift. Um, we'll go here. So your HSL tool, if we go back over to layers, it's adding a, a shift adjustment 
we can go and click on whatever colors we want to kind of shift into any direction. So if we take red here, for example, we can actually move it along the spectrum. Let me bring this up. And you can see how it's adjusting over here. Give me the yellow. Perfect. That's a lot better. See a little bit more about what's going on. So you can kind of change the background to the colors. This is very helpful for um, color aware because you can make different selections and then do very um, very quick HSL adjustments so that you can put them into the red, green, and blue color space. Um, and you can turn the opacity down over here so you can just add a little bit of a tint of like a blue or a green, whatever the case may be. It's going to vary, you know, picture to picture, but um, this is super helpful in making those quick adjustments if you have Affinity Photo. So yeah, so that's pretty much all I want to talk about today and hit on. Um, we'll print this out and then I'll show it in the Discord later on this week um, just to kind of show the final result. But if there aren't any other questions, we can hop down to Application Hangout.